required to plan, uh, uh, to, to participate in partnership efforts to secure this infrastructure. And, and uh, among those are uh, the uh, gas and oil industry, for sure. You have banking and finance, transportation. These are infrastructures that has to be, that this is a huge area for policies. And industrial control systems are, it's a generic term, and it covers uh, many of the others, like uh, gas and uh, oil and uh, production control and etc. So, for example, I picked the case of healthcare, and I wanted to I have the industrial control. I will not have time, maybe, uh, I don't know. If I, uh, but, uh, so the policy, so for example, in healthcare, there is some generic uh, policy statements. So these are the high-level management uh, directives. And for example, all systems used by a healthcare company shall be uh, operated with compliance to HIPAA. Why? Because HIPAA is a standard. If you are not HIPAA compliant, then you cannot offer e-health services, and etc. So, uh, what you have is policy statement. This is an example. What I, I mean here is, uh, and I'll point you to a, a nice textbook where you could find a catalog of uh, of policies. And based on your industry, your organization, your enterprise, you can pick and adapt the policies that you uh, want to deal with, along with the metrics that should go with it. Okay, so this approach, this is all on, uh, uh, on industrial control. I'll skip this. This is industrial control. Uh, maybe let, let me conclude. Um, so I'm preaching more of a uh, prevention, uh, preventative uh, uh, control. Uh, a preventative uh, way uh, uh, to address security, and this is a management control. It's not a technical control, because what you are developing is maybe uh, a soft uh, file, and uh, you want to uh, make it uh, available. Now, how do you enforce the policies? How do you collect metrics? Then you go down to the technical controls. You go to, get down to firewalls. You go down to firewall. Uh, uh, double quote policy, but, but these are very low level type of things. Uh, deterrence using well-defined policies. I say well-defined because uh, if you want to uh, uh, judge people on uses, you have to define your policy very well. You have to make it to support your strategy. You have to make it uh, uh, measurable, very important. Uh, otherwise, how would you, how you judge that there is a breach of policy? Uh, definitely laws and legislation to Policies. I should say also that uh, not many countries have real clear cybersecurity policies. And uh, uh, there are success stories, there are failing stories, there are policies that have never been enforced, and etc. Uh, the formal approach to policy development maintenance, and this is what I mentioned the, the cycle, the metrics collection, and you, you need to consider policy as a project, really, and make it as a formal project. Uh, I'm preaching a catalog of policies, uh, and, and I, I say this is useful and effective. It will save you money, it will save you headache. You learn from industry-proven experiences, and etc. And definitely, we need the metrics to as a, a part, a very important part for policy maintenance and uh, policy enforcement. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I run very fast. Maybe coming from academia, I speak very fast, and I expect okay. <laughs> expect you to be. Uh, Okay, thank you very much My pleasure. for listening. Thank you, Dr. Salah. Thank you. Now, because we're running a little bit over time, we are about to break now. So Dr. Salah will be around in the coffee break. So if you do have any questions for him, please don't uh, okay. hesitate to go to him directly. We are now going to go on a 15-minute um, coffee break. So it's not half an hour because we want to catch up on time. So let me clarify, it's 15 minutes. So we should be coming back here at around 10 to, um, 10 to 11.